Hey there everyone, welcome to the Banjo-Tooie 100% speedrun tutorial. This video is going to cover the main route that is used by the top runners for the category, um, which is only possible on the North American N64 version. If you're using a different version, you cannot use this route. You will have to make changes, so be aware of that. Another thing you will need is uh, a Jinjo manipulated file. If you don't know what this is or how to get it, I will have a link in the description of this video of how you can obtain one. Um, and lastly, this is on the practice ROM for convenience sake for me to make these better and to skip over slow, boring stuff that we don't need to sit through. Uh, for runs, you obviously would be playing on a cart uh, on your N64. Emulator is a band, so be aware of that before attempting to learn it if you would like to submit to the leaderboards. And I am one final thing is I am going to assume you have played the game before and know the controls, what each button does. Uh, so I'm not going to be explaining all that stuff, but I will talk about all the speedrun stuff like camera and setups and all, the, all that good speedrun stuff. So, I think with that, we're ready to begin. So when you would start a run, you would copy your Jinjo manipulated file over. And then uh, another thing is that you your timer would start at 3.77 seconds to accommodate or not having to skip the opening cutscene, as that is how long it takes if you buffer it with B. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, I think with that, we're ready to start. And go. So this video is going to cover everything up to the end of Glitter Gulch Mine 1. So when you start the game, you want to get into Talent Drop. I'm going to have a separate video made that explains movement and all that stuff. So I don't have to stop and go over what's the fastest movement and all that. Um, so we can just get right into it. You get into Talent Trot. Jump over this boulder and come up to this green line on the wall here. This line lets us know how far Banjo can go before triggering the Klungo cutscene, which shows Klungo go into the digger tunnel, which we are heading to next. Um, we are, our goal is to backflip and then do a beak bust onto that upper ledge in order to skip this cutscene. Um, if you want, you can start at the line backflip and then beat bust like this but ideally i don't think it's too hard oops, is to uh slide slide into it backflip and beat bust up okay so once you've done that turn your camera over here jump on this molehill to these shoes and we're going to get these eggs Turn your camera away from the water, it is very laggy. So get those eggs and enter the digger tunnel. I'm not going to explain every input I do, every camera, just the important ones. There's input display for a reason to learn from, as well as input display on my current, actually not my current, on um, some people's current personal best of this category you can use as well to have a run setting. So for Klungo, he can pull one of three potions at randomly. We got blue, which is the worst for a uh, not resetting because it is random. This is the one that has the clones. Is random where they go, so I'm just going to play it safe. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> nice. Even with playing it safe, this one sucks. The hitboxes are very bad. You have to make sure you jump especially to the side to hit him to avoid what happened to me, uh, which is very bad. Do not want to hit the incorrect one. The right Klungo will always be the last one to move. So this one moves first, this one second, this one third. So as I said, there are two other possible potion colors you could have gotten. Once you have gotten a color, it cannot reappear again. And in this run, we only are doing two of the three Klungo fights. The optimal pattern is either green-blue or blue-green. You do not want red. Red is the slowest. Green is the fastest. 
I have videos to how to optimally do each of these fights on uh, on my YouTube channel. There's also a playlist of Banjo Tui tutorials that covers each trick and a bunch of other stuff more in depth than I'm going to in this general guide. So once you beat Klungo, run down the digger tunnel and you're going to go to Jingling. Keep your camera away and hold R to keep it down to not have Jingling's temple on screen early, which reduces lag. And enter Jingling. This is an example of something that I'm going to use the practice ROM to make a lot uh, faster in order to watch. You would just get this first jiggy and skip these text boxes for this cutscene of Banjo meeting Jingling. We have to come in here right away because otherwise we can't really progress at all. But once you leave and Banjo's walking out, Banjo is going to put his hands on his hips. Oh, they actually didn't have time there. He normally would, and then you would press and hold B, and that would auto-skip the cutscene. I, I kept speeding up the cutscene too long, but... Normally, he'd put his hands on his hips, then you would hold B, and that will skip the cutscene. Anyway, get into Talentrot after that cutscene, and we're going to come over to the second trick of the run. This is White House Jump. Oh, this one's not too complicated. Just jump on these steps and jump on this door frame. And from this, like, corner here, we're just gonna jump this way, flutter, and then beat bust to land on this upper ledge, which skips going through Bottle's house. Um, it's really not any more complicated than that. Uh, jumping out of Town Trot is a blessing and a curse. It allows us to do things like this, but it can also be annoying uh, when trying to do movement. So, once you're done with that, Proceed into Wooded Hollow. And we are going to open the first world, Jiggy Wiggy's Temple, which is Mayhem Temple. Jump over that Ugger. Talk to the Disciple and enter the Temple. So to open each world, if you're not familiar with the game, you have to do a puzzle, and these puzzles are random. You cannot memorize and copy and master these. But which pieces come out and where they go on the perimeter are random, but you have to react and just do your best. These are also very hard to control and get good times on, so don't get too upset if you're not good at it right away. Even I'm not doing very good, because I'm trying to explain and play at the same time. That was actually really bad. Ideally, a good time for this is like a 93. Really good. 94 is possible, but that is insane. But I would not worry about your puzzle times that much. This Fun fact, this is the longest level opening cutscene, so... Each one after that will be uh, shorter from here on out, even though I'm skipping through them. So once you've opened Mayhem, down trot down these stairs and leave Jiggy Wiggy's temple. All right. Don't forget to tag the silo. We are going to need it for later and then enter Mayhem. All right, remember what I said about R with the camera? This is gonna be very useful for here. Hold R, jump on this warpad, skip this text. Skipping text is done with L, R, and B for most texts. Some text is just B, but the majority is L, R, and B. But holding R when I was going up those steps at the start reduced a lot of lag from having more of the level uh, not loaded at the same time. We're gonna get all those notes on the steps on the way up and jump over to learn the first move from Jam Jars, which is Egg Aim. This lets us shoot eggs in first person. And every time you learn a move from Jam Jars, there's a 11% chance that he will bonk on his silo, which costs around 4.5 to 5.5 seconds depending on lag. This is just an RNG time loss, there's nothing you can do about it. Just, uh, 
don't be surprised when it happens, because it will. But after you have all those notes that I collected, enter Mumbo's, get the Globo, and come up and, t uh, talk to Mumbo. Skip text. Hold A to speed up this text. And accept his help. And skip that, oops, skip that text box. The Mumbo text is one of, uh, various text boxes that you can skip with just B as- Oops, text box there. Um, you can skip this text with just B, so if you want to do that, feel free. Once you have Mumbo, leave his hut, and we're going to avoid this warp pad, go around it, get these two notes. That Moggy can be in the way, so just look out for him in case he is. Go around this corner. And fall down. You're gonna jump off this ledge, and the sign text will interrupt your fall, so just skip this and go to the pad. Turn your camera like this for this cutscene. Where your camera is for the Goliath movement is gonna be important because you can lose a lot of time to lag if your camera is facing an unfavorable position. A lot of um, camera movement in this game is very, very specific to, um, very specific uh, setups, not setups, but very specific angles you want to have in order to minimize lag because this is a very laggy game. Uh, so just hit the boulder, hit the door, try and copy the camera I had. You want it to face the river is the least laggy angle you can have there. Come around for this jiggy, and when we get it, we are going to pause and save and quit the game. It's faster to do this than let the timer run out or go back to the podium, so save and quit. When the screen goes fully black, hold start. Oops. On the practice arm, it wouldn't do that. On, or on a regular card, it would not do that. It would uh, skip the opening, uh, opening part where the game loads in. So just there's a few differences so far because I'm on practice from some text is gone, some cutscenes are, are a bit different. But in a run, you would just hold start after the screen's fully black, and it would skip the opening from playing. So then after that, just re-enter your file, come over to this silo. And enter, take the only warp to Wooded Hollow, and re-enter Mayhem Temple. Alright, we are going to, now that Jade Snake Grove is open, we are going to get these red feathers. These are very important, you have to get red feathers here, and enter Jade Snake Grove. Jump over this Moggy, and leave Town Trot before learning this move by pecking on the ground. This is Grip Grab, this lets us grab onto ledges, however, for this Ginger right here, we're going to just Beak Bust, because it's faster. Anytime you can Beak Bust versus Grip Grab a ledge, it saves time, so it is good to do it whenever possible. Normally there'd be a cutscene for getting your first Jinjo, but I have already seen it. So after you get the Jinjo, we're going to take 4 damage on this fire. Go to 1 because we're going to prep for a Death Warp. We do a lot of Death Warps in this run, so health management and knowing where to take damage is quite important. Um, so yeah. Take your health down to 1 on that torch. Hit this warp pad and skip that text box. And come around... Um, to with the code chamber area. Jump up the slope. Backflip up here. So normally, what you're supposed to do is slowly tiptoe for Slumber's Jiggy. However, the Jiggy is just enough in reach that what we can do is get into Talon Trot and do a big jump and peck when we're close to the ground. Like so, and get it. Uh, if you wake him up, just go back down to the previous level, and then uh, go back up and try again. It's faster than trying to walk, so... 
Once you have slumbers, Jiggy, get back into town trot. I'm gonna do a big jump over this guy. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can land on the ledge before him and then either kill him or wait for him uh, to go back into his uh, root on the wall. Um, something I should explain, if you flutter onto a grip grab ledge, when you press C to let go, you cannot flutter again. So make sure you are over this uh, platform when you let go. If you just grab the ledge before fluttering, then you can do a flutter off of the, the ledge release. So that is very important to keep in mind in the run. And then you would just grab the first Cheeto page, a cutscene would play, you'd skip the text, and then we're going to Death Warp on this guy. Okay, when we respawn, we're going to get into Town Trot, zoom out the camera, and turn it over here. And we're going to take off kind of where the this vine is, right here. Uh, up to where, um, what is this? <laughs> Briegel, Briegel Blaster is. So, we're gonna take off. What we're gonna do is press A four times, and then we're gonna angle up on the stick to angle down. Just a little bit, and a little bit to the right. But what happens is we're gonna Beak Bomb and Crash Land in front of Jam Jars, and then Spam B to talk to Jam Jars. There's an alternative route that doesn't do this, but in my opinion, I find this is easier because getting the Jinjo in the water after is very, very easy. You can softlock doing this, but if you do it right, that should never happen. So I'm going to demonstrate. One, two, three, four. Look down. Smash B, just like that. Yeah, this is Briegel Blaster. This is the first person move, which lets us enter Target Zin's temple. And then after you learn the move, we're gonna roll off this ledge into the water and you should hit the Jinjo. Zoom in, and come out of the water, and we're gonna use the flight pad again. This time, we're gonna beak bomb over to the kickball stadium, grab the Jinjo in flight, and then we're gonna beak bomb up to the top of the temple jiggy, get that in flight, then we're going to do a 90 degree turn left and beak bomb down to flies, land, and then shoot all the flies in first person. This is going to be a lot at once and this is, section is not easy and requires a lot of practice. So if you suck at it, don't worry. Everyone's messed this up. This is not easy to do. The flying controls are very hard. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to demonstrate. So Get in first person, mash B, fly up into the Jinjo, hit the Jiggy, turn here, land in this alcove for the honeycomb, jump down here, and then shoot the flies. These flies are also random, so don't worry if you have some bad attempts. That one was okay. It's also very hard to control the first person aiming, so... Don't worry if you're not great at that. Get this Jiggy and avoid any skill stops that may have dropped from the flies. And then come over to this bridge. Keep the camera facing backwards like this. Do not turn it. The temple is very laggy, so you want it to face this way. Jump for the Jinjo on the bridge. And then we're gonna come over here. I'm up the, these steps. and enter the temple. Now we are doing our first uh, first person golden eye section, I guess we're gonna call it. So to control this, the optimal way to move is to hold up and a C button, either C left or C right, so you get movement forward and sideways combined. Um, I'm not gonna explain where to hold what button uh, just watch the input display to learn. It's very unintuitive at first, but after some practice, you'll get used to it. So, I'm just going to follow the, the route. We only need 20 um, totems to open Target Zan. So, we do the same route every time. 
The enemies in here are RNG, so sometimes these guys will be in the way. That is okay. Get that text box. And even though your egg count is low, do not worry. It is not that important. Use these eggs to shoot the Moggies if they are in your way. You have to. Come and hit this passage for this Jinjo. If you're fast enough, you can leave before the door closes. And even though there's two pathways here, the first one always takes you to the slightly sacred chamber, and the second one always takes you to the really sacred chamber, regardless of which one you go in first. So, get the Jiggy and leave. This Moggy tends to be in the way. Yes, he is, so I usually kill him. Skip that text, and we're gonna go fight Target Zan. This boss is quite difficult and goes really fast, and there's a lot happening. I'm not going to be able to explain it in depth. Um, the basic is just you want to move to the left, move to the right, move to the left, move to the right for shooting him, and one extra Magi will appear after each phase. So it gets progressively more difficult. So just try and copy what I do. Use the input display for help. This is a very fast fight. The Moggies always spawn in the same positions, by the way. Oh, that's the target. Not a very good fight, but it's okay. It's a very difficult fight. You can't even get close to mimicking this right away, don't feel bad. A lot of the beginning of this run has a bunch of different mechanics that are all very weird and awkward to control. Look down here to reduce lag, and then when he blows up, move up into the jiggy. Pause, and save and quit. And now we are done with Mayhem Temple 1. And the screen fades, hold start again and re-enter your file. Alright. Well, then we're done with Mayhem. Instead of opening the next levels, we're actually not going to do that, and we're going to go to Plateau. So a warp to Wooded Hollow. We're going to go this way. You can do a beak bust to skip this ledge grab, but it's pretty precise and you have to know a setup for it, so do not worry about uh, that one. It is optimal, but not worth worrying about. So, when you get to plateau, whoops, you want to jump from this plank up here. And what we're going to do uh, is tag that silo first, don't forget that, is enter Glitter Gulch Mine early. So the setup for this is if you just turn the camera at the start like I did, and then you uh, see these tracks on the ground, if you start holding C right from when these tracks end to when you learn that move over there, which is fire eggs, the camera will be set up uh, very nicely for GGM early. So let me go do this. I'll mash through the text boxes to in fire eggs. And the entrance should be up on the stick from where we are right now. Alright, this is a pretty good angle. So you want your angle to be a little... A little bit of an angle. Not much. Like 10 degrees max. This What I have right here is ideal. Oh, excuse me. So, how this works is we're going to get on the wood as close to the ledge as we can. Do a full jump with A, and then when we're at the peak, press Z to beak bust and move slightly forward. Keep doing this until you clip through, and if you land on the grate, just jump back onto the wood and keep going again. So, jump, press Z, hold, oh, that was not forward. There we go. From here, you're gonna beak bust on to this rope, 
and jump flutter for this Cheeto page. So if to beak bust under the rope, hold upright, C left, and mash C. And then after that, we're gonna roll down, hit these shoes, tag this warp pad, get this globo on the glitter pile, try and copy my camera as best you can. Whoops, that was not very good movement. And enter Wumbas. All right, in here, talk to Wumba, get the text, transform into the detonator. Detonator is very, very useful in this run for a few reasons, and I'll mention why. Jump over to this warp pad and warp to the entrance. So for detonator movement, you want to press A to do short hops. As soon as you land, you don't want him to auto jump because he kind of drags on and full jumping is not faster. So just do short, short jumps. Take a hit off this guy and enter a uh, fuel depot. The note over here, get that note, get this note, and land on the fuse. You don't have to press B, just go in the area and the detonator will walk to it and blow up these rocks. So why is the detonator so important? Well, it lets us um, put this box through this uh, opening to Witchy World, and this sets up a very, very important glitch for this run that saves a lot of time. It also lets us do a trick coming up to get a Jiggy early, which is also very useful. So after that cutscene, jump over here, jump through this note, and go up here. There's a TNT box. I kind of want to just show it. There he is, right there. We're going to do a big jump down from here and explode onto it. The detonator does one damage to itself and the box does two, so we take three damage at once, which is a very fast death warp. Um, so yeah, after that, um, one thing I do want to mention. The optimal way to do this run is to warp into this canary cave with a clockwork warp, which is kind of hard and only saves six seconds over what I'm going to show. So if you don't want to do that, just go on this fuse to blow up the rocks. It also saves a clockwork egg. Then after that, jump over the water here. And go into the toxic gas cave. And here we're gonna blow up this rock. A honeycomb in it. Grab this Jinjo and then leave. Now, the trick coming up that we're going to do is called detonator levitation. And basically, uh, you want to turn your camera like this so that your so that up on the stick is facing into the wall, like like here. Now, there's a few th things you have to do for this trick. Number one is the direction, the camera angle. So it's facing up, we have that check. The second thing you have to do is be surface, which we are. And then you have to be holding into the wall. So this is good right here. Anywhere along this wall, it doesn't matter. Anywhere works. Uh, you just wanna be up here, hold up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna press A and then B very shortly after. You can look at the input display to see how close I press these buttons, but it is very close. It is, I basically just roll my thumb from A to B pretty fast. Um, if you're at 1 HP, if you fail this twice, you'll be at 1 HP and you can't detonate at 1 health to kill yourself and blow up. So if that happens, you have to death warp and then come back here. So try not to miss it more than twice. But I'm going to demonstrate it, so hold up, A and, whoops, A and B, and then jump, once you get the Jiggy, and jump up this glitter pile for these notes. And we're going to hit this warp pad and warp back to Wumba, and we are done with the detonator. 
Old right and a little downish and mash A to get in the pool. Be a text box here. Get in town trot and leave Wumbas. Now you're gonna go over here. And you wanna do a jump at the edge of this rail and peck to get on that platform. Roll back flip to get up here and get into town trot as you learn um build drill. This is the beak bus move that lets us break boulders and things. After that, zoom out your camera and go around this corner and go over to Mumbo. We actually are going to skip those notes. Just get the warp pad, get this note, get this globo, and then build drill this rock. Oops. Drill the rock. Try and get into talent trot as you enter the loading zone if possible. There's a Jinjo in the jail here. Don't worry, we will come back for it later when we're able to get it. Bill drill this rock. And one final rock. Boulder, I guess. Get in the Talon Trot. And come through this pathway. Um, there's two ways to do this. I'll show both of them each one time. Um, Talon Trot. Entrance is the easier way. Hold R here. And we're going to press C down to zoom out. And this ladder above Banjo's head, we can just backflip Beak Bus to, which skips going through Generator Cavern the normal way. It's not too hard. If you do the setup I showed, you can just backflip, then Beak Bus, hold up. If you don't get it, keep mashing Z. Keep mashing Z anyway, as there's no reason not to. Uh, in case Banjo grabs the bottom of the ladder, in which case you can re-grab. And then, um, it actually happens quite often, uh, more than you think, especially with the way I'm going to show next. So if you don't, if you want to do the faster way, peck into the loading zone. Hold C left, mash A, and beak bust in. Whoops, that was a terrible attempt. Let me go try that again. You hold C left, mash A, and the angle I can't really describe because the camera is constantly turning, so that just takes some getting used to. There it is. And there is the, the beak bust tree grab. So once Banjo is like at this rung on the ladder, kind of close to the top, um, like right here, jump and peck for this jiggy, and then turn into the wall and take a damage into this loading zone. Get in the Talon Trot, and we're going to go get our last... Or not our last, never mind. I'm going to go to Power Hut. This is going to look very um, dark and hard to see. So most people have their TV brightness turned up quite a bit for this to make this easier. We're going to... Come here, and you can, if you can see the chains, you should be able to see the chains. We're going to jump to this chain to land on this lamp. And from this lamp, jump to this one, get in Talon Trot, and get this Jiggy and run off. It's actually quite difficult movement to do well and to do fast, so that uh, definitely would practice that one a lot. So after you have death uh, voided out, Roll to the box to get these shoes. Jump when you see the glitter on your feet right there to this gate switch. Now, what's going to happen here is the gate's going to open and we're going to get uh, a few sets of notes along the way as well as a Jinjo. So, uh, watch my camera. This is a very hard section. There's a lot going on. With this note, this note, this note, and then just go up. Get this Jinjo jump and turn around. It's faster. Jump off that slope. Don't jump from too far back, or you will um, fall into the water. If you enter a falling state into the water, you will just fall in. And then, whoops. Uh, I might just show that ending part again. So you can hold 
Uh, once you've done the section and entered the loading zone, you can hold the stick up left and then let go. And then I like to pull back into the water in case either one that happens or um, in case you fail to re-grab or get back on the platform, you instead fall here and can just jump up instead of going off there and losing a ton of time having to go back around. Um, getting down here with speed shoes isn't the easiest thing in the world. You have to kind of just learn the timing for. But what you can do is you can press B to cancel the shoes as you're sliding and going through this loading zone and do this without the shoes. And this is much simpler, uh, in my opinion, because you can just hold the entire direction the whole time until the very end, like this. And then pull back, mash A. Uh, if you do it well, you can just land on this ledge. If you don't do it as well like that, you'll grab, but that's fine. Just pull up and then roll, jump, flutter down to this, uh, this ledge. Just hold R and roll into this guy into the water. Press B to swim. Go into first person for all swimming. And then just follow the path I'm going to take. It is the same path every time. Left, forward, left. Jump out of the water and get into Talon Trot. Take a hit off Billy Bob backwards into the Jiggy and then another hit to Death Warp. Now, like I said at the start of the level, we're going to hold up left. Uh, up right, C left, and mash C. Oops, I was too late. <laughs> too late on pressing the button. Uh, you death warp, and then you would grab the pole about here, and jump to leave the level. Uh, after this, you just jump down, get into Talon Trot as you talk to the obelisk. Skip the two text boxes, not just one. And it will say you have enough jiggies to attempt my challenge, warp to my temple. Say yes. And then from here, we have 14 Jiggies, which is enough to do um, the next three puzzles. But uh, that is going to wrap it up for this part of the tutorial. Um, the next part, we're going to cover Witchy World 1, which is quite a long level. But uh, with my <laughs> practice ROM, it should it, this video should go by quite a bit faster. So, yeah. Thanks for watching.